Hello YouTube, Sidekick here with a bit of a treat today. We're taking a first look at the F-104G Starfighter. And as you can see, we're sporting a lovely RCAF livery as we taxi out and take off at Cobaletti. Of course, we're headed out to the Iron Bombing Range to try out the F-104 in air-to-ground mode. So, a uh, quick bit of background as we're getting up here and uh, getting out to the range. Uh, the F-104G mod was released in an ex EFM or external flight model version uh, yesterday. A link to the Discord server where you can find the details uh, of how to download it is in the description of the video. As I said, the mod has a full EFM, um, but it is based on the F-15C avionics. This means that while the flight model <laughs> is truly a thing to behold, you will need Flaming Cliffs 3 installed to be able to fly the plane. And you also won't be enjoying a fully clickable cockpit at this time. Um, that's really not a huge limitation, though, because there really aren't a lot of switches that you'll need to throw in the cockpit. As I said, uh, all of this is pretty much secondary considerations to the feeling of flying this rocket anyways. If there was ever a plane that needed an EFM, it's probably this one, because it just doesn't fly like anything else. Uh, it really is the largest engine they could find, with the least airplane wrapped around it that they could manage. It was designed with one thing in mind, get high, get fast, and shoot down bombers before they could drop nuclear bombs where they were not wanted. So, of course, we're going to take it out to the range and drop some bombs at low level with it. Because, hey, it's what I do. It's also what the Starfighter did for a lot of its career. Most of it was actually spent with Air Forces other than the United States Air Force. In fact, the initial release of the model comes with skins for the Luftwaffe, the RCAF, and the Hellenic Air Force, all of which used it in the ground attack role, as well as an interceptor. Alright, so we've done a trim run over the target area and we're climbing up to altitude where we can drop the bombs. Um, this is far less effort uh, than it would be in just about any other aircraft. Um, this is an airplane that likes to go up and it likes to do it fast. Um, it also likes to do that in a very straight line. Uh, going around corners is not a thing that the F-104 wants to do a lot of. But getting upstairs in a hurry really is, and as you can see, we're already up to plenty of altitude as we're coming around looking to line ourselves up for a drop on the big target. Now, its flight characteristics actually make it a pretty interesting ground attack plane because, you know, it does go where you point it without a whole lot of fuss, so it's very stable in a dive. It doesn't have massive roll or pitch rate, so it's easy to line up and it's not twitchy when you're doing it. And after the drop, it will get you out of the area and back to altitude without breaking any kind of sweat whatsoever. As far as the weapon system goes, it couldn't be simpler. We're using the F-15C HUD, so all we have to do is select air to ground mode. If you have bombs loaded, it'll give you a CCIP pipper, and if you have rockets loaded, it'll give you the rocket radical. There are no switches to select quantities or ripple intervals. You just drop everything you got every time you press the button. Our attack run is very much a standard pattern. We're rolling in, we're putting the lift vector on the target. We're going to pull up until we get the flight path vector over the target with the line in the middle, and then we're going to pull up, put the flight path vector beyond the target at an aim-off mark, and then we're just going to wait until the bottom of the, the CCIP line turns solid, and then wait until it's over the target there, and then we're going to drop the bombs. Not a bad drop, that one. All right, so let's. that was a fairly uh, shallow dive angle, so let's... Uh, go back upstairs and uh, that booming sound you hear in the background is every once in a while when I get the, the uh, throttle into afterburner mode it really lets you know it which is good so there are some video other videos out there particularly GVAD has made some great vides about using the F-104 in its intended role as a high altitude interceptor 
and I'd encourage you to go uh, find those as well because they really are interesting about how well the aircraft was designed to perform the role that it was actually intended for. But as we're finding out here, it's not no, it's no slouch uh, as an iron bomber. Doesn't carry a lot of ordnance. Doesn't do it in any kind of complicated way. But it is actually uh, pretty straightforward to get the uh, warheads on the foreheads, as the saying goes, without a whole lot of fuss. So uh, this time we're going to do a slightly steeper dive angle. Going to go after the same target, but we're going to go at it uh, from a little higher and a little closer, so we can see what it feels like in a steep dive. We're just about there. Once again, standard, standard attack pattern. We're just going to roll it in. Get that lift vector pointed at the target, and we pull up. And you can see we're, we're pulling some G's there, and we're pulling up, and then we just need to slow down the pull up and time the rollout to get the flight path vector just below the target. We're going to pull it up above the target, keep the line coming up to the target, and go. I think our pickle was a little late that time, so we were a little long, but not too bad. Okay, let's do a little bit of a different run this time. Let's do a pop-up attack. Now, I don't, I haven't uh, had a chance to do the research to find out exactly how the 104 was uh, used by pilots, but I do know from talking to people uh, who flew the aircraft at one point that this was uh, a mode that they used when they were training. Essentially, the point here being that uh, there are very few planes that are going to give you as much up in your pop-up as the 104 is. So we're going to come in low. We're going to pull up very steeply close to the target. We're basically going to roll over inverted, find the target, roll out on it, drop the bombs, and be gone before anybody knows what happened. So we're just going down the coast here, find a good spot to turn in. Haven't flown the 104 enough to be really comfortable flying really low, and as you can see, I'm getting up a little high in the turns here. That's going to take some, going to take a little bit of uh, of practice to fly the 104 really low because uh, because it's not really the way nature intended it to fly. So it's going to take a little bit of work to get used to that. Trying to get down here again a little bit. And keep an eye out for the target area there off to the left. And up we go. Okay, climbing up, picking up the target, keep climbing, keep climbing. Get the afterburner on. And now we're rolling over. And there's the target. Now we just got to line her up. Same old, same old. The lift vector on it, roll the flight ve vector out, get it on the target, pull it up beyond, wait for that solid line, and get a little bit back more in the middle, and there. Well, all right. Well, I don't know about you, but I think it would be pretty hard to find a way to have more fun with an aircraft in DCS than what we just did right there. Especially one that uh, was the mainstay of the Royal Canadian Air Force for a long time, and uh, which I've always wanted to fly in a simulator. So I really appreciate the 104G guys giving me the chance to make this video. I hope that you guys uh, get a chance to try the aircraft. I'll post this mission on their site as well. And for now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.